welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. We are currently in the book of 1 Corinthians with our Bible study, and we are doing chapter 5 today. The book of Corinthians is a letter that Paul wrote to the newfound saints, those that have been converted into the kingdom over in a city called Corinth. And so as he uh, went forward evangelizing, they believed in Christ, they were converted. So he went back to them on many occasions to comfort them, to edify them, and to um, just exhort them in the information regarding their position and, and the kingdom. And he also wrote letters. So this is a letter that he wrote to them. And we can see that he has a part two also. We can see many of the letters throughout the New Testament that he wrote to other individuals that he converted, converted from different regions in the earth, okay? So today's Bible study will be in reference again to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and what Paul begins to talk to them about is fornication, okay? And the impact and uh, the importance of not being involved in fornication and how that as we go over into the next chapter, he's going to talk about fornication again and the importance of it and how that whenever an individual does begin to engage in fornication, they begin to come become one with that spirit. Okay, therefore, that spirit begins to override the uh, Holy Spirit, uh -oh. begins to override the Holy Spirit and therefore... Uh, they're no longer in the will of God, okay? So that's the importance of this whole Bible study in reference to what he's saying about fornication. Okay, now some things, as I've actually said on this uh, video platform through this ministry many times, that now Paul is a disciple. He is an apostle. He's a prophet, an evangelist, just like you and just like I am, Okay. He's a saint. He's one that's been sanctified in the kingdom of God. Therefore, he can make mistakes. <laughs> okay? Let's just and make sure we grasp that understanding. Even though he's gone forward in the will of God, okay, to evangelize, to apostleship individuals into the kingdom, he's a newborn uh, saint. Okay? He's not Christ Jesus, but he's been converted into Christ Jesus. Therefore, yes, Christ Jesus does speak through him. Yes, heaven does speak through him but he's also in the flesh in the earth. So at times he may have said things just like you and I. You may say things sometimes that may not be according to what Christ said, okay? And nevertheless, we are to have discernment because God gave us the Holy Spirit, okay? No doubt he ran into individuals like that too also, you know, and it's not something that you, um, you want to make uh, like a big, deal about because again he's converted into the kingdom but it's up to the individuals in the kingdom to have discernment which the heavenly father has given us to be able to see and discern what is what okay because that was the reason for him even giving that to us for us to be able to know the truth and be set free so first corinthians chapter 5 begins with it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication is as not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Okay, so that's one of the things that they're doing. They were having sex. Some of the men were having sex with the father's wife. Okay, so he goes on to speak to him in reference to that type of fornicating because we know that fornication is uh, having sex without being married. Okay, without being with your Adam or with your Eve because you can be married. And this is the real, uh, this is really something to pay close attention to and to uh, maybe think upon. You can be married to an individual and that individual may not be your Adam or your Eve that God has chosen for you to be with in the earth. So therefore then that in both individuals will be walking in fornication even though they may be married by the earthly standpoint of view, okay? And that's going into a whole nother deeper revelation 
in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. But I just wanted to point that out because we are discussing uh, fornication here in this chapter. And there are different forms of fornication. In this particular form of fornication, Paul is speaking of that they had began to uh, engage in was they were having sex, that some of the men were having sex with their father's wives, okay? So he begins to address that. So going on to verse 2, it says, and you are puffed up. They were uh, bragging about it. They were they had pride about it. They were puffed up about it and have not rather mourned. They had no remorse, okay? So therefore, and I'm just going to throw this out here into the fact that they may, because they were newborn saints, you know, like some of us were in the beginning, and they just did not comprehend what the significance of the Holy Spirit and being born again is. Because in the beginning, sometimes, depending upon the individual in your walk, okay, in the earth with God, you may not have even reached that level of maturity, okay, just yet in your life. And depending upon where you're coming from, where how, what God had to heal you through, what he had to deliver you from, so we can take that into uh, account also because, um, you know, they were engaging in this fornication, the men having sex with their father's wives. So we don't know what their actual experience was prior to him actually speaking to them about that. OK, just as again with some of us in the earth today, you know, many people have many different backgrounds that they come from. So therefore, God has to deliver them out of certain things. So here, uh, verse 2 says, and they were puffed up about it. They were bragging about it and have not rather mourned. They didn't have any remorse. They didn't feel any sorrow about it at all. That he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. Okay, stating, and Paul begins to go on and tell them, you know, this is not something that you brag about. This is not something you'd be proud of because you could drop dead and go to hell right you know in that moment because god has decreed and declared in his word and we're going to read it in the uh, next chapter i think it is or did we read it or no we've read it uh which chapter i think we've already read it that he says uh let me see here where is it at okay yeah in the previous chapters it was chapter three of the same book first corinthians he says if a man defile the temple of god him shall god destroy and so fornication is a form of defilement to the temple, you know, from within, because the Holy Spirit is the temple, no matter where it's at. If it's, okay, if it's in a building, if you go inside, if you take it in the building, you took it in the building, because the, temple, the Holy Spirit can only house flesh and bone, okay? Just like with satanic spirits, unfortunately, they can only house within flesh and bones, okay? Vessels that... Uh, vessels real human vessels i should say okay so anyway he begins to speak to them about being prideful over their sin and so uh why verily he says as absent in body but present in spirit have judged already as though i were present concerning him that has so done his deed that has done this type of deed okay so here, now this is a good thing that he even began to have this conversation with them because had he never even spoken to them regarding fornication, they would never have known that it's a problem with God and never would have gotten themselves back in alignment, back in the will of God. And who knows where they would have went deeper and deeper in the different, in the opposite direction of God and uh, become an enemy to God. So it was good that Paul even spoke to them about this particular uh, ordeal or the fornication, how it is a problem, and it can be a problem between the relationship of mankind and God, you know, because that's uh, just helping them out in such a very powerful way. So he begins to go on to say, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, your glorying is not good. And he tells them because they are glorying in the wrong thing. Okay, because they have begun to uh, engage in fornication. And if they begin to, let's say, go praise and worship God, they're not really praising or worshiping God because they have 
began to indulge in another type of spirit because again they become one with the spirit of fornication so he goes on to tell them your glorying is not good know ye not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump purge out therefore the old leaven okay that you may be a new lump as ye are unleavened for even christ our passover is sacrificed for us so therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven, neither with leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the leavened bread of sincerity and truth. Leaven, meaning the Holy Spirit, meaning the uh, word of God, Christ Jesus. Okay, because because they had began to engage in fornication, they were making the leaven, uh, as Christ, or uh, as Paul is explaining it to them, they were uh, messing up the leaven. The leaven, it's not a good leaven, okay? And basically, leaven also referring to, uh, as Jesus Christ referred to leaven being a doctrine, okay? And we're going to go deeper, go into that also. So therefore, he says in verse 8, Let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the uh, unleavened bread and sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in a, in a letter, not to, comp not to uh, company with fornicators. So he's saying, I told you not to uh, keep company with, you know, don't be amongst or assemble yourselves around those that fornicate. And he says, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetors or with extortioners or with idolaters. For them must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one he says do not eat okay for what have you to do to judge them also that are without do not you judge them that are within but them that are without God judges those outside the kingdom okay that's what he's talking about therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person so that's the end of uh, this chapter, but we're going to go back and talk about what he said here in verse 11, because he says, but now have I written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, if any man is called into the kingdom, he's become a saint. He's been born again. He said, be it. But if he goes back into being a fornicator, a covetous or an idolater or a railer or uh, a drunkard, if he begins to backslide, basically. Because some of those things we get caught out of, and we still stumble and have trouble with them, but we've been born again of the Spirit. But if you go back to them and you begin to, as he stated in the previous verses, they began to get puffed up. They were bragging about it. They were happy about it. Then there's a problem because you're not supposed to be happy with your sin or evil that you've done that God is having a problem with. We're supposed to uh, have remorse about that, and, and once you've been born again of the Holy Spirit, it convicts you within your conscience and it makes sure you re have remorse about that. Either you ignore it or you submit to it, okay? So in this particular case, evidently the Corinthians were not submitting to it because they were having a ball about it. And you could just use your imagination to maybe think about how they may have been uh, puffed up about the fact that they were doing this type of thing. And it's an ugly imagination, but nevertheless, you know, because of how sometimes men can be about sex, unfortunately, and um, what it may, you know, cause an individual to want to uh, brag about, okay? But it's not, it wasn't a good bragging. It wasn't a good boasting, and Paul began to address that also. But the thing I also want to make note of here is how uh, he says here that, you know, about the leaven, okay, and the eating, because again... And he tells us in verse 10, and he told them, he said, Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the coveters of extortioners, or idlers, idolaters, he tells us not to eat. Now, Jesus Christ also referred to not eating with uh, those type of people also, but in reference to the Holy Spirit, and, it, and then as God always does, use parables and he uses comparisons, he's referring to doctrine, okay? Because, of course, at some point or time or another, they must have gotten into some other type of doctrine 
and they began to utilize that doctrine. Maybe it said that it was okay to fornicate, you know, or maybe someone came to them and told them it was okay to fornicate. God, God doesn't have a problem with that. Well, that's listening to another form of doctrine, okay? That's going with another type of bread because God's bread said that he would, uh, if any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy. And then he goes on to tell us even, even further in his bread, because he is the bread of life, Christ Jesus. His word is our bread, and we ask for his bread daily in our, our Lord's prayer that Christ Jesus told us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Hallelujah. And he tells us that in this bread, this word, his word, of, he tells us that, uh, and we will see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 as we go to the next chapter tomorrow. But in chapter 6, verse 18, he says to flee fornication. For every sin that a man does is without the body. But he that commits fornication, he sins against his own body. Okay? So that is a sin against your own body. So therefore, going back over to what God said, if any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy. And where is the temple of God? It's converted into you once you've been born again of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the temple. And you become the vessel that it houses the temple. Okay, so just want to make sure we make the uh, comparison with that and the how God uses symbolization once again. And let's take a look also into the book of Ezekiel just to bring confirmation to what I'm saying in reference to Jesus Christ and God referring to his word as bread. Okay, uh, Ezekiel chapter three, Ezekiel, Old Testament prophet. The guy used uh, as he walked in the prophetic ministry in the heavens, of, in the earth, from the heavens. And God used him uh, and also gave parable signs and symbols to dramatize different messages and revelations that he released through him. Okay, so chapter 3, verse 1. No, chapter 2. Let's go up to chapter 2, starting at 9. Ezekiel says, And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and a, a roll of a book, okay, was there. And he spread it before me, and it was written and with, from within and without. And there was written of lamentations and mournings and woes in the book. Now, that book is the Bible. Lamentations, mournings, and woes. We have a book of limitations, and we definitely have plenty of woes throughout the Bible that God has speaks of. But chapter 3 says, Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat that thou find. Eat that. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. Okay? So he tells him to eat the book, and that's just symbolic symbolization to saying, Get full of my word. Okay? Get uh, full of me. Get full of my spirit. And then he's going to send him. Then he sends him to the house of Israel. He says, uh, he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this book that I give you. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Okay. As honey. That's what the book, the word of God is. Honey is the word. And we do have a video entitled honey is a word because that's what it is. Sweet. When you get it in you, when you get the Holy Spirit in you, when you get the word of God, our bread within you, it is sweet like honey. Okay. So that is the symbolization that uh, God was making in reference to eating the word of God. Okay. As referring to doctrine. Whenever uh, Paul began to speak to the Corinthians, he was speaking to them in reference to uh making sure that they only digest the doctrines of the heavenly father and no other doctrine. Don't let it get into you because you can hear many things, many doctrines. You can listen to many doctrines, but don't digest it. Don't, don't take it in and don't let it be that from which you stand and make your life journey or your life uh, 
point. Uh, let me see here. Another book, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 27, was another book I was led into in reference to this, where uh, Deuteronomy 27, help us, Holy Ghost. Okay, uh, and this is again, if you want to take a look in this particular chapter, 11, Deuteronomy 27, let, uh, verse 11 and verses 14. Again, where God is speaking and talking, even in the Old Testament, as he began to go forward with the children of Israel, and he begins to speak to them about fornication and then the different curses that can come from engaging in that particular uh, form of behavior. All right. So I'm going to let that be the conclusion of our Bible study today for 1 Corinthians chapter 5. God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you as we continue to go forward here with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible study video channel.